Le Cordon Bleu College of Culinary Arts is dedicated to preparing aspiring professionals in the areas of culinary arts, patisserie and baking, and hospitality and restaurant management. Disaster Planning and Response Art Rescue is a first responder for the world of art, providing planning, packing, evacuation, conservation, and storage for all your treasured possessions. Paperweights are the crown jewels of glass artistry. You can discover both antique and modern paperweights at the L.H. Selman Gallery in Chicago's Fine Arts Building. My name is Elizabeth Alfano, and I am your host of Fear Noir Presents the Dinner Party, which means every month, the last Monday of every month, I invite a celebrity chef. Tonight, you have Michael Cornick, which is really a treat. I invite a celebrity chef, and he or she cooks for three sh cultural luminaries. So usually artists, but sometimes, you know, next month we have the Commissioner of Cultural Affairs, Michelle Boone. So you never really know who's going to show up. And over food and wine and chocolate and artist performances and Twitter, the conversations flow. So this is really an interactive dinner party. I, I, um, you all know you're getting served food right now, so everybody gets to eat along with us, but also you should be part of the dialogue. So I want you to pull out your cell phones, put them on mute, and Twitter, any comments that you have about the show, any questions you have for our wonderful artists, we have, yes, you can tweet us at fearnoartchgo. Right now, we're at the cusp of something really great, I think, happening with the Chicago Cultural Plan that's going to be confirmed in October. It's just a really nice time for the city. And so I, I wanted to, to bring you three together. I guess at the onset, it might seem that you don't have much in common, but actually you do. So I don't know how many people know this, but Tony teaches at the University of Illinois Chicago. Mm -hmm. And of course, Josephine goes into, I think it's 51 Chicago public schools reaching 3,000 children. Yeah, we're in 60 this year. 60, mm -hmm. 60 this year. So um, a different source of teaching all together and then Jeff has programs called Audience Matters and Seeds where you go to fourth fifth and sixth graders and then you also go into high schools, high schools. bringing so they're bringing music into the schools and then you're of course teaching at the college level and over the years we know that we've seen art really disappear practically in the schools mm -hmm. and so I want to open up the question to you since you're all in arts education you know, we only do what we know. So if you're not exposed, you don't naturally wake up one day and say, I'll go to Expo Chicago and look at art. It has to be something that you get throughout your life. And so since art education has been dwindling, do you find that kids aren't interested in what you're bringing to them? Or do you find that they grab it because it's all they've got? Anyone and all of you. <laughs> um, I think they're very excited about it. Yeah, they definitely want, want as much as they can get and they're sponges. Yes. Yeah, so whatever we can give them, they're just excited to, to be a part mm -hmm. of it. Definitely. I agree. I, I think children are hungry for great art. Yeah. And when you present it to them at an excellent level, um, they are, they're, they're, they're like sponges as well. Um, we actually have 33 singers going to Carnegie Hall with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra I'm so next excited. week and tomorrow evening. We're performing at Millennium Park, so hopefully all you, you all will be there with some warm jackets on. Um, but it's extraordinary to see. Uh, what b brought me to the Chicago Children's Choir, I was a classically trained musician, violin, piano, you know, singing, conducting at a very young age, uh, Chicago native, but it was going into the Southside schools when I started Chicago Children's Choir, age 22, and went in, and um, it was the Academy of St. Benedict, and I sang this gospel piece to them, a traditional piece, hallelujah, and they repeated, hallelujah, and I said, oh my goodness, how is it possible that you've never been given any arts right. education? Right. And let me tell you, I have seen all of those children graduate high school, and they're in college, and I'm very proud to say that some of them are here. Oh, that's so. fantastic. I know that we're going to have a performance in just a little bit, but I'm curious if you think music helped them get to college. 
I think so. I think so. I mean, I don't know when art and science, um, you know, became separate. You know, look right. at Michelangelo and his obsession, you know, with, with art and science. So I interview a lot of artists, and I just interviewed Nick Bowling, who's the artistic director of the Timeline Theater, and he said something that I think is very true. When he goes to, you know, New York or L.A., they're focused on having a hit. And that focus on having a hit takes them away from the act of actually creating. And because we always fly slightly under the radar, although hopefully that's changing, Chicago is the city that works. And so if you go back to sort of the first Mayor Daly and had this slogan of Chicago is the city that works, Chicago is the city that creates because we focus on the work, not the hit. And so I think it's going back to some Midwestern values of just focusing on the work. But we have a great balance, I think, of the yeah. big city but a small town. Yes, right. And I'm a Midwestern guy too. There's no other options for me. But I think that's one of the keys too. We, we all know each other. It can be a very small town atmosphere. Right. But we're big and hip enough to do to offer everything. And you mentioned architecture and what a great city for that. And we, our last concert this year is about architecture. We've commissioned five composers to pick one, uh, an iconic building in Chicago and write a brand new piece about that. Oh. And uh, so that's going to be very exciting. Yeah, I, I think that's a fascinating way to sort of cross-pollinate among the arts. And mm -hmm. that's sort of a big influence or two. I have a tweet for you. And this person, uh, at Dick underscore celebrity, good for you, because you are getting a gift certificate for two to an upcoming Chicago Sinfonietta performance. His tweet for you is, how does the satisfaction you get from teaching compare to the, to the satisfaction you get from performing? Nice question. It is a great question. Um, I, I don't think I could live without the combination of the two. Uh -huh. um, and it's... Uh, you know, one is more personal. The teaching is just, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's another complete mm -hmm. incredible feeling, you know, with when you see the students and what they can achieve. Yes. Um, I don't know. I need both, though. Yes. Yeah. And you balance it then. You yeah. sort of. And the piece we'll do tonight, we'll balance that a little bit. I'll, you know, I'll talk about that. But it's Doing a, little, a, piece a little tonight. Balanced. We might. Yeah, do well, wait a minute. Let's see what you're going to do. I think this is an original piece, is it not? It is, actually, yeah. Wow, okay, well, good, because after we hear this original piece, I want to talk to you about the creative process and how original pieces come come to be, but I think we're going to make some noise, people. Let's bring I up, almost uh, had to have original. I'm, we, we're featuring, I'll mention my guys. So we yeah, got, please, please. Yeah, this is the Chicago Symphony at a percussion trio. This is Tina Laughlin, and our special guest, Gil Alexander, who's a West African specialist. Gosh. And he's going to have cool. a djembe. She's going to play two dun dunes. That's a West African bass drum. And I'm going to play this uh, grandfather of the xylophone, which we play in our orchestra, called a balaphone from West Africa. I've known all about Jeff, but I met him for the first time today. And I said, I think if I saw you on the street, I would not say that man's a drummer. But he assures me that he is. So uh, let's see it, mister. on my iPhone because I don't like to clean my house and I know that I could clean my house to that. <laughs> I could. I absolutely could. That was wonderful. Thank you. When I make public work, I'm really trying to talk to everybody. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, the eyeball, I wanted to make something that everybody understood on a certain level. So mm -hmm. it's just such a simple idea to try to make art that, um, I, you know, people either love or hate, but they, it's not a mystery to them. I'm not trying to fool them. You know, it's a big eyeball. That's what it is. So, uh, th you know, there's no hidden agenda behind it. Or mi um, so, yeah. I mean, I love, I love the uh, getting back to Chicago. I don't know. There's something about the public forum that uh, the egalitarian aspect of it is really challenging. And not everybody. You know, some people hate it, and uh, but they tell you about it. And there's something kind of pure about that that I like. I mean, I. I definitely feel that I'm making social, I'm trying to, this is not just decoration, I'm trying to, you know, change that corner, change people's, is it too pretentious to sort of say, change your life for just a moment as you pass through this insane, you know, thing on the corner that wasn't there before. So I'm very, very interested in audience. What's the ratio of things that you try and you just end up not going with? Because not everything you touch is going to work, of Every course. Every day. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes, no, yes, yeah. Right. you got to yeah. keep, uh, I'm not sure the ratio, but yeah, you just keep going. You yeah. keep plugging. And, and how do you get through a, a rut? Because you all have those periods when you're not creating, too. Well, 
I, 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 David Kelly once said that failure is enlightened success. Uh -huh. So I think the more you fail, the faster you get to the uh, you know great right. result. So, but um, to answer your question, I mean, you just have to keep trying, and sometimes you can't even think about it. Sometimes in failure, you you find something that um, you know brings you joy. Right. You know. So I don't know. It's it's an interesting question. You know, because we mm -hmm. I, I take risks with new new pieces as well. And um, I love what you said about, you know, doing it for, for the public, yeah. right? And so I struggle, and I'm sure you understand this, with new composers mm -hmm. creating works, and sometimes it doesn't resonate with the audience, and people wonder why audiences are diminishing, you know, because they don't understand the music, or, you know, then the classical music people are like, oh, well, that music is too, you know, contemporary. And, right, you hard know, to please so many bifurcated audiences. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how that plays. I in, mean, I in live in terror of that kind of artist block, you know, the equivalent of sure. writer's block. But I haven't, and I think part of my practice or thinking is dealing with that. I mean, I love the kind of the, the beat, you know, be here now, uh, yeah. that kind of be in the moment. Uh, that's part of the practice. And just, and you know, in Warhol was really important to me, his kind of just, you know, I think the abs you think about Jackson Pollock or the abstract expressionism and just angst. Oh, if I do this, it's going to be, you know, great. If I if I I can't make the mis a mistake, and Warhol was like, you know, whatever. You want it in blue, no problem. Yes, and there's exactly. just something yeah. so, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, it's just Liberating. you just kept making mm -hmm. and making yeah. and making. So, I mean, I think a lot about that, and it is sort of just you just I don't know. The more you do it, the more you trust it, and you trust. And if you fail, uh, you just you learn from it, just as you're saying. I mean, I heard Franz Klein quote recently about being an artist is you have to be willing to be embarrassed, mm. you know, to embrace that. Creativity comes from experience, and it comes from giving yourself a chance to be open-minded to both new things, new learning, new combinations, um, but also to, at least for my cooking, to really recognize what has proven to be part of our past experience with food. And you won't find a lot of uh, the, the really truly molecular gastronomists, I think, acknowledging historical cooking as, as much as you might find at MK or at my other restaurants. Um, I'm deeply rooted in the history of French uh, cooking and Italian regional cooking. And I think that, that I, I don't tend to go too far creatively away from things that, that have proven to work together for a long period of time. That being said, I like to create dishes that, that entice somebody to, to new thinking, but with flavors and, and textures that, that I think generally work together. So most of my cooking, I would say there's very whole food presence in it. And you'll recognize the, the ingredients from the way that they came from nature to the restaurant in, in a great uh, respect for that.